Could the archipelago's latest megaquake set off its sleeping giants? In mid-October 2025, a 7.4 magnitude tremor struck off Davao, Mindanao, followed hours later by a 6.8 aftershock, and only weeks earlier, 30 September 2025, a magnitude 6.9 quake rocked Cebu. These shocks killed scores and triggered tsunamis and landslides, stoking popular anxiety that the big one could trigger eruptions. Scientists stress that Philippine volcanoes are driven by deep tectonic and magmatic processes rather than by distant quakes. In fact, the islands sit astride the Philippine Mobile Belt, a complex chain of arc volcanoes fed by subduction of the Eurasian and Philippine sea plates. This setting makes the Philippines one of the world's most volcanically active and earthquake-prone regions, but major volcanic eruptions depend on magma dynamics under each volcano more than on nearby earthquakes. With that in mind, we examine the current unrest at Canlaon, Mayon, Tal, and Pinatubo, four of the country's most dangerous volcanoes, and what geology is telling us. Canlaon Volcano, Negros Island, is currently the most active. This massive andesitic stratovolcano, highest point on Negros, is riddled with subsidiary cones and has a two-kilometer, about 1.24 mile, wide summit caldera. It routinely produces small phreatic or strombolian blasts and heavy steam emissions. In late October 2025, Fivolx recorded multiple ash puffs and a brief moderately explosive eruption lasting about three minutes. On 24 October 2025, a sudden eruption hurled a dense grey plume nearly 2,000 metres about 6,562 feet high and sent incandescent gas clouds, pyroclastic density currents racing down Canleon's southern flank. Large rock fragments were hurled hundreds of meters, hundreds of yards, and ashfall darkened nearby villages. Sulfurous fumes were reported in barangays surrounding the volcano, and the eruptions even generated a shockwave detectable kilometres, miles away. Authorities maintain Alert Level 2 over Canleon on Fivols's 0 to 5 scale and keep the 4 kilometre, about 2.5 mile, permanent danger zone evacuated, warning that more explosions or ash bursts could recur. Fivols notes that this cycle Modest blasts after months of quiescence has repeated since mid-2024. Monitoring data show that seismic swarms and inflating ground hinted at rising magma beneath Canlaon, but gas was unusually low just before the October event. In fact, scientists point out that Canlaon's eruption was driven by closed-system degassing. Trapped volatiles built pressure until a sudden explosive burst relieved it. In plain terms, the volcano's rock plug kept gas in until the system blew out. This is not unusual behaviour for Canlaon, which has around 30 confirmed eruption episodes since 1866, mostly small to moderate explosions with local ashfall. Still, Canlaon is dangerous. Historical eruptions produced pyroclastic flows and lahars that threaten villages downslope. Recent rains on its steep slopes, including from Typhoon Pepito in late 2024, have already remobilized loose ash into muddy lahars blocking roads, as noted by civil defense reports. Scientists warn that Canleon remains on a hair trigger. More short-lived blasts or ash emissions could follow, and heavy rains could trigger hot lahars in river channels filled with new volcanic material. Farther north on Luzon, Mayan volcano, Albay province, looms large as the Philippines' most historically active and deadly vent. Rising nearly two and a half kilometers, 
about 1.55 miles, and famed for its perfect cone, Mayan's eruptions routinely produce lava flows and pyroclastic flows that sweep down its many radial ravines. Its worst disaster was the February 1814 Plinian eruption, Volcanic Explosivity Index 4, which unleashed hot avalanches and ash that buried towns such as Kagsawa and killed over 1,200 people. During April and September 2023, Mayan again animated with lava dome growth and flows, frequent seismicity and pyroclastic currents on its southeastern flank. In those months, lava flows advanced up to a few kilometres, a few miles, on the south-southeast slopes, producing dozens of short pyroclastic flows and ash clouds. Thermal imagery showed robust dome extrusion and glowing avalanches at night. By late 2025, however, that episode had tapered off. Fivolx reports Mayan at alert level 1, low-level unrest. At level 1, Mayan is largely quiet, but still unstable. Authorities explicitly warn residents to avoid the 6-kilometre, about 3.7-mile, danger zone, and pilots to steer clear of its summit. Even at level 1, Mayon can cough up sudden phreatic or magmatic bursts. Fivolk's bulletins caution about phreatic, steam-driven explosions, landslides on its steep slopes and especially lahars, torrents of mud and debris, during heavy rainfall. This is because Mayon's flanks still hold thick layers of ash and pumice from its last eruptions, 2018 to 2023 which heavy rains can mobilise into deadly mud flows. In short, Mayan is calm today, but not inert. Its hot magma system remains shallow enough to cause steam blast events, and its loose volcanic debris poses lahar hazards whenever the monsoon rains hit. South of Manila lies Tal Volcano, Batangas province, a small cone inside a lake filled caldera. Tal is a famously unconventional volcano. Its main vent is a crater lake on Volcano Island, itself at the centre of a 25-kilometre, about 15.53-mile, wide caldera. In fact, Tal is a stratovolcano on a 5-kilometre, about 3.1-mile, island in Lake Tal, within a huge volcanic caldera. This water-rich setting means most eruptions are phreatic, or phreatomagmatic, magma-steam interactions. The January 2020 eruption was a textbook case, generating towering ash plumes up to 15 kilometres, about 9.32 miles, high and pyroclastic surges that devastated towns on Volcano Island and beyond. It killed dozens and briefly grounded flights in Manila. Since 2020, Tal has remained at alert level 2 down to 1, with frequent tremors and ash bursts, but no new high-magnitude eruption. In fact, Fivolx reported that in 2022, a series of small steam and ash explosions, some lasting seconds, intermittently shook the lake. By mid-2025, Tal was at level 1 signifying low unrest. Even so, on 25 October 2025 cameras captured a minor friato magmatic puff at the main crater, sending a white-grey plume roughly 1.2 kilometres, about 0.75 mile, above the lake. No major ashfall or casualties followed, and alert level 1 remained unchanged. Geologically, this is a typical tal event. An abrupt flash of ash as lake water flashes to steam upon magma or hot gas intrusion. These are usually short-lived and unpredicted. Scientists note that heavy rain is Tal's other hidden danger. The volcano's talus slopes and older lahar deposits can slough off into the lake. Fivox has warned that torrential rains could trigger volcanic mudflows, debris flows, on the volcano's west and north slopes. 
threatening lakeshore communities like Agoncillo, Laurel and Talisay. So even a quiescent tal at level one still poses hazards via flooding and mud more than by a large eruption, a result of its lake-fed hydrothermal system. Finally, Mount Pinatubo, in mid-June 1991, Pinatubo hurled an ash column into the stratosphere. Plume heights measured 20 to 22 kilometers, about 12.4 to 13.67 miles high, and generated massive pyroclastic flows. The eruption knocked out roofs under rain-soaked ash, and together with heavy monsoon rains, caused devastating lahars. Over 200 people died, many from roofs collapsing under wet ash. Tens of thousands were displaced, and regional climate was measurably cooled by the plume. Today, Pinatubo's main crater holds a deep acid lake, and thermal activity is negligible. Five Volts's monitoring shows no immediate build-up of magma. Pinatubo currently rests quietly, alert level zero, but scientists keep a wary eye on its waters and hydrothermal pressure. The one major ongoing hazard is remobilization of the 1991 debris. Fivolx warns that heavy rains can erode the thick pyroclastic flow and ash deposits on Pinatubo's slopes and send lahars down the Socobia, Pasig Potrero, Morella and other river channels. These river lahars can rush out even decades after the eruption, as was seen in typhoon seasons of the 1990s. In late 2021, Pinatubo even produced a small phreatic puff that briefly sent steam 13 kilometers, about 8.07 miles, aloft, a reminder that its hydrothermal system remains on edge. But by mid-2025, Pinatubo has shown no new unrest. The volcano's immediate eruption threat is low, and any sign of real magma intrusion would likely be preceded by seismic swarms and uplift at the crater rim. So, are the quakes waking up these volcanoes? The evidence suggests not in a straightforward way. Each of these volcanoes has been independently restless due to its own magmatic and hydrothermal conditions, which are only loosely connected to distant earthquakes. Science has documented cases where very large earthquakes might nudge a very primed magma system, but in practice the Philippine quakes have not triggered any explosive cascade. Instead, volcanologists focus on each vent's monitoring data, earthquakes right beneath the cone, tilt or deformation, and gas emission, to judge real threat. Canlaon's recent activity stems from magma seeping into its edifice and plugging up with gas, a typical pattern recapping its moderate blasts since 2024. Mayon's current quiet comes after weeks of lava dome effusion. Ta'al's small bursts reflect its crater lake dynamics. Pinatubo remains lingering with rain-driven laharis, but no sign of renewed magma upflow. However, the safety stakes are high. Each volcano still demands vigilance. Official peril zones and evacuation plans are based on the geology. For instance, Canlon's four kilometer about 2.5 mile, permanent danger zone covers sectors that could see pyroclastic avalanches, ballistic blocks, or ash in the next blast. Mayan's 6 kilometer, about 3.7 mile. Permanent danger zone is kept clear of villagers because even small phreatic explosions or rock slides on its classic cone can be lethal. Tal's caution zone is the entire volcano island, plus restricted areas downwind, to keep people away from sudden steam explosions or lake surges. And Pinatubo's caldera is permanently off-limits, more to keep people away from acid waters than because another cataclysmic blast is expected. After any powerful earthquake, these volcano observatories warn of possible secondary hazards. 
Ash clouds from even mild eruptions can endanger air traffic, and shaking can destabilize loose volcanic debris to spark landslides and lahars. During Typhoon Pepito, November 2024, Five Olks explicitly reminded residents near Mayon, Pinatubo, and Tal that heavy rain could incite deadly mud flows on slopes dusted by past eruptions. In the end, the Philippine volcanoes continue acting like volcanoes, driven by magma intrusion, gas pressure and rainfall, not by the last quake shaking Mindanao. The recent temblers may intensify public fear, but so far scientists have seen no dramatic cause and effect. What we do see is that Canleon, Mayon, Tal and Pinatubo each have their own unrest story, richly detailed by seismographs, gas sensors and satellite imagery. All four remain dangerous. Canleon with fresh explosive pulses, Mayon ready to burst with little warning, Tal simmering with steam and Pinatubo hiding its power in that silent lake. The key to safety will be heeding alerts derived from the rocks and magma themselves. As experts caution, heavy monitoring and community preparedness must stay high, not because of the fearsome headline quake, but because of each volcano's next move beneath the surface. Support our work by liking, sharing and subscribing. And don't forget to tap the hype icon to help this video reach a broader audience. The more visibility we have, the more we can keep spreading reliable, research-based science.